Good morning, uh, viewers, and uh, welcome to another broadcast of Venture Capital Fund. Today, I have a very talented and dynamic personality in studio with me, and uh, her name is uh, Felicia Boyle Bazar, and uh, she has an impeccable um, uh, record in terms of business and business development. Um, when we look at uh, Ms. Bazar, uh, more bizarre uh, background, we see that she has a master's degree in business administration. She is also a certified public accountant, and she has a Bachelor of Science in, uh, in accounting, special where she passed with honors. She's also a mother, a mother of two, <laughs> and um, she has a tremendous passion in terms of working um, with with micro, small, and, and medium-sized enterprises. Uh, that is certainly an impeccable record. Welcome, um, Ms. Uh, Felicia Bart bazar Thank you, Mr. Hey, it's good to be in your presence. Awesome. Uh, tell me a little bit, uh, what should the public expect when they hear the term uh, certified public accountant? Sure. Uh, in Guyana and the Caribbean, it's usually termed um, ACCA, and that's the usual de designation. Uh, but from the, the, the US side, and that's where I am licensed, it is basically the same designation only from uh, the US area. And, and what that means is it's someone uh, who is eligible to sign off on audits, external audits, uh, and who is able to uh, deal with any form of assurance, uh, you know, giving investors uh, the comfort that these numbers are what uh, the, the firms say they are. So in a nutshell, it's just like a, a stamp of approval for whatever numbers are being presented, financial numbers that is, are being presented by uh, the firm to the public or to a particular investor. Awesome. Um, what uh, we have also seen, I've also learned that you have over 15 years of experience, you have built up a really impeccable track record in the Bahamas. Um, you have worked a lot in the Caribbean and you have also worked in Switzerland. Um, yeah. Can you share some of those experiences with us? Sure. It's really hard to, to speak about myself, but I'll, I'll speak about uh, the experience itself. Um, and over the years, I, I believe that my experience has shaped my passion and the passion for small SMEs, you know, businesses who are in that uh, realm. Because what we know is that inflation, a country with high inflation, is really formed because of a lack of middle, the middle section. So we have, uh, you would find that countries who have a uh, big inflation rate would have a big uh, top end meaning income spectrum. And then there's the low income, but the middle income is, is what's the option. So over the years when, um, for example, I worked for a company called UBS and UBS uh, for me the, the special privilege of um, going to Switzerland and being in Zurich for, as you know, Zurich is the financial capital of the world. If you mm -hmm. use, uh, New York or Manhattan, but it's actually Zurich. Yeah, that's where uh, in all of the investment banking really takes place, uh, private banking, asset management. And so in looking at their economy, what I found was their middle income, uh, which is really uh, occupied by SMEs, that's what's booming and that's what's called driving the low inflation rate in Switzerland, uh, as well as what's driving the economy where persons are living in a higher uh, income bracket and are able to really perform in their business, uh, 
junction. So I asked the question over the years, okay, so how do I uh, use what I've seen in Europe to uh, transfer to the Caribbean? And so that, that was one of the reasons why I created uh, our brand, Executive Business Solutions, which totally focuses on SMEs uh, with, the, with the end result of, you know, how can we make small and medium-sized businesses thrive such that they wouldn't have to be looking for the next dollar to, to see how they pay salaries, how they, but rather they'll be going through the motions in order to get to a larger entity, or if they want to remain a, a medium-sized entity per se, then they would do that framework. So uh, my experience over the years from the accounting firm to uh, banking really have uh, groomed me into developing my passion for small businesses and um, trying to transfer that passion uh, by collaborating with professionals like yourself uh, who are in the market and know the market well. Um, I know uh, the business and, and what I wanna achieve, but when it comes to being on the ground and knowing you know, the, the key market and how to take businesses from point A to point B, that's the reason, main reason why I collaborate with uh, knowledgeable professionals like yourself. I love that answer. Um, since we are talking about small businesses, SMEs, and I know that you have tremendous passion here, um, locally, what we have seen is that um, small businesses, they would normally say access to capital is one of the, the factors that prevents them from scaling the way that they want to. You and I know that it's more than just the capital, but just talking about the capital itself, uh, locally, when we talk about financial markets, we talk right. about corporate financing. Um, in most cases, what the research is showing is that small businesses they depend very heavily on debt financing, um, not recognizing perhaps that in equity financing, you have a tremendous platform to partner and access capital. Uh, for example, you have IPO, and that's a tall order when it comes to Guyana. We'll talk about that uh, later on. Um, and in other broadcasts, you have merger and acquisition, you have joint venture partnership, um, you have angel investment, you have growth capital, venture capital. And we have seen businesses leverage LBOs. Um, what, in terms of equity financing, and I know that we talk about this, I know that you have tremendous passion here, I know that you, we, we talk about a, a, a fund to help businesses. Um, can you speak a little bit about this as an alternative to debt financing, which in most cases, businesses would say come at high interest rates, um, there is not equity in terms of how funds may be allocated to uh, to businesses, and maybe later on we'll dig, do a little deep, deep dive into all of that. Um, but what are the better alternatives as against, uh, you know, debt financing? Sure, uh, and you know, Mr. Thompson, it has to do with uh, sharing the knowledge that um, you know, if you give a piece of your business, you're not selling out. So I like to look at the ownership of a business as a pizza. So if you take, um, if for each slice represents um, an ownership portion uh, or in financial terms, we call it a share, you know, or um, some sort of, of percentage owned in the business, which doesn't necessarily need to be a share. We've been burnt a lot in the Caribbean by, you know, persons wanting to invest with us, but then they're possibly looking to trick us out of um, our, our ideas and, our, um, and then throw us to the side. A lot of these great businesses that we see sometimes are usually because of someone who is not part of the business sharing that idea with someone and who essentially takes their idea and leave them out in the cold. 
Now there are ways to protect uh, ourselves from that sort of predatory uh, investors. And that's where before you get involved in any sort of uh, ownership distribution of your business, you should always have your financial advisor or your business consultant, as well as your lawyer. Because everything, if you decide to do equity financing, and basically equity financing is giving a portion of your business uh, to the, um, well, giving or, or selling part of your business to the investor who is looking to put monies and own part of that pizza. So, but before you do that, obviously the company has to be properly set up so that, um, you know, the lawyer incorporates it uh, properly. And then uh, their legal share certificates, which are passed, and this is a private offering, um, passed and and those shares are giving a given a value by a business consultant or your accountant. Uh, so that's the first lot. What is the value of this business? What is the potential market value? And so, how much will I sell a share for? So that's that's in a nutshell. Uh, there's the permanent aspect, and then there's a temporary aspect in equity. So the temporary meaning that look, I give you. Five, five million Guyanese dollars. And I want you to give me a return on my investment of say 5% over three years and the deal is done. So it's, it's, it's a temporary thing. I don't permanently own your business uh, or own part of your pizza, but I'm temporarily holding on to a few of your pizza slices. And once you pay me back, my 5% or whatever is agreed, then the deal is done. Who I benefit because rather than putting my monies in a um, either negative interest bearing account or very mega 0.00 whatever interest bearing, I am investing it into your um, whatever business you have, whether that be a, a arts and craft business um, for three years you're benefiting as the owner of the arts and craft because uh, you're able to utilize that capital to either ramp up production and take it to the, um, uh, the, the export market or whatever the case is. So that those are two quick examples of equity financing, the more permanent option where I sell you shares and you, you can then sell those shares, but transfer those shares to your children or whomever. Um, or I give you like a temporary uh, bond, so to speak, into the business, all right? Even though bond is termed debt, um, but it's, it's temporary. I'm, I'm sowing it. I expect this return on my investment. And after a while, I'm done. It's, it's, it's clean. So there are other forms that we can spend. We obviously need an entire segment. Um, but it's, it's more so understanding that you don't have to sell yourself cheap. You don't have to go and take a 16% loan when there's monies there to be gotten. And so it's up to persons like yourself and, and of course EBS to see how we can possibly make that happen uh, for the SME space or, or even the micro SME space. Uh, so yeah, so in a nutshell, that's what I would um, I would say. You're you're muted. Uh, I want to add. Um, I love what you said. That's one, and I want to add that understanding private equity financing and um, can be a tremendous blessing um, to all stakeholders. You just look yeah. at some. Um, the average uh, accredited investors. Uh, may have uh, liquidity sitting in a 0.1 interest bearing account. But by putting that capital into the equity market, meaning small businesses or businesses generally, they're able to negotiate for a three, four, five, six, seven percent uh, yield at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. On the other side, in terms of the beneficiaries of the equity financing, uh, equity financing and debt financing is like night and day. Yeah. And debt financing, 
you're saddled with interest and, and, and principle. And uh, if you understand how it works, um, the interest um, for a period of time is much higher than the principle that you're paying to bring down that principal balance that you would have borrowed. So these are important talking points and these are important issues that over time we will amplify so as to ensure that we can fully educate the financial sector, the business community in terms of the, the various options. Um, however, I must add also, this is not a knock on debt financing from where we stand because I do believe that debt financing can be legally ma manipulated or legally managed um, where you're able to bring down the, the debt cost and bring tremendous benefits, not only to the beneficiary, but we believe that with what we were attempting to do here, uh, which is working with bankers, working with businesses in terms of debt mitigation, uh, we're we would be in a position of strength or enable the beneficiaries to be able to manage their debt portfolio better, which will, by extension, give greater confidence in the financial institution to give them capital to invest. Because we know that small businesses go to access uh, capital from the commercial banks um, locally is not the easiest thing. Right. Uh, but I do believe that with the platform that we're on now um, representing and businesses, uh, we will be able to bring down some of those, uh, you know, tough pre-qualification criteria um, that the banks are asking for. So I love what you And Mr. Thompson, just to add to that, uh, you know, it's, it's also building the trust level, right? Yeah. Uh, because for, uh, for, for an equity investor, I need to be able to trust that I'll get my return on investment. Exactly. Um, and for, you know, so it's 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 a you know, the guiding term: hand wash, hand make, hand come clean. You know that term? Exactly. Yeah. So we we have to be able to stand for something, and our word need to be our bond. You know, it it really needs to be. If we say that this is green, we're gonna do this. Then we need to have that high level of integrity that this is going to be met you know if i'm going to give you this amount of return um versus having to struggle with a 16 percent loan then you should bet your bottom dollar that every single month i should be stowing away uh in a probably a fixed uh deposit uh where where i have your investment set aside so at the end of the time i'm able to transfer to you uh, because it doesn't it might as well I keep my money in a negative interest bearing or very slim interest if I'm not going to get back my investment or if I got to chase you with a cutlass trying to, to get my investment. You know, you promised me this. Where where my darn money, you know? <laughs> you know, um, you're perfectly correct with um, what you would have said. And what I like about the synergy that we are about to form here um, between your operation and, and mine, Global right. Capital Inc. It's a lot about building trust because traditionally, those who are, who are in a position of strength to call themselves accredited investors, uh, they're gonna be feeling more secure with tradition, which is to deposit their uh, excess liquidity into a yes. 0 0.1 you know, interest bearing account. Um, largely because one, um, Diana, we don't have a, a strong equity market. It's there. We have the stock exchange market, which is an equity market. But there's a lot of work that has to be done to, uh, to make it a more uh, financially friendly. And when I say financially friendly, I mean the, the public can leverage it to increase their annual yield. Um, Again, you have to make it uh, a t a reachable, you know, it can be some pie in the sky hanging from 1000 feet off the ground and I'm, I'm, I'm five feet four without a ladder or any form of par uh, airplanes or whatever. Exactly. So um, it will take time because we would need legislation, legislative changes and all of that. Uh, but in the meantime, what do we do for 
businesses who are looking to be financed to ramp up production. Exactly. And I do believe that it is necessary and perhaps as time progresses, these are things that we have to start advocating strongly for. Locally, we have an equity market. We don't have a market that deals heavily with trading and markets. Uh, we don't have a, a market that deals with um, what we call investment management. I say this against uh, the fact that those markets um, can not only bring benefits to businesses, but it can bring benefits to the citizenry. All right, yeah. in terms of the, the average person being able to invest in a stock, yeah. a mutual fund, a hedge fund. Um, so coming back to what we have started talking about early on, which is private investors and accredited investors having trust in the, the equity financial market. Um, there are things that we will be doing that will help to beef up and boost up that, that trust. Uh, we would normally say this, you know, the success of a business is not only based on access to capital. Uh, the success of a business will also depend on market intelligence and market access and your ability to negotiate, you know, your entry and scale up into that market. Yes. So, point that I know that your operation uh, within the Caribbean, the Bahamas and Switzerland, uh, you're actively involved for the last 15 years in the, not just uh, looking at equity financing, but you also have a passion for marketing. Um, would you care to talk a little bit about um, your role in, the, in marketing and how you see this lending to uh, confidence in the, the brand that we, we, we are now um, synergizing to bring to the local market? Sure. Well, I believe, first of all, that every business uh, owner or entrepreneur should have a business plan. Awesome. Whether you're in business right now or you're thinking about getting into business, you should have a professionally done business plan, which will act as your blueprint for what you're trying to do. Uh, I also refer to the Christian term, the Bible. Of, of what you're trying to do because it's going to give you specific instructions as to how to get it done. And part of your business plan entails your marketing aspect. Yes, you can do your marketing plan separately, but if you have a business plan, that should have uh, what your marketing aspect will be. And marketing, as we know, is we see that the new vaccines are coming out and um, for the coronavirus. And, and we see that Pfizer and Moderna, they're, they're marketing like crazy uh, to, to make us comfortable with what they're offering. And uh, if you follow the marketing enough, you would become very comfortable. But you have to combine facts as well as marketing. So what we're trying to accomplish here is that not only sell you a pie in the sky by giving you the pretty graphics and the lovely emotional videos and all of that, but in this forum, as an example, this is marketing, but it's more the fact-based aspect of it. Um, so we would have to combine education uh, with the marketing aspect, because we don't only want you to feel good, but we want you to uh, be able to truly understand what it is that um, you're being uh, offered and what it is that you can incorporate in your business model to, to make your business successful. Um, so definitely uh, we need more of our Zoom uh, learn or when things get back to even more normal, uh, we can do lunch and learns um, where we can have uh, discussions on exactly what we're presenting on the equity space or the financing space and, um, and get that done. And it's, not, it's definitely not a competition with financing, financing institutions as they are, because uh, we would need collaboration in all different aspects. So it, it's just bringing them together, making sure that, that we can work together as a, as a nice, well-oiled machine, so to speak. 
I, I love what you said there. It's not a competition. Um, it's a collaboration. It is. And uh, I just want to reinforce what you're saying there um, based on the fact that what we have seen is that Guyana is currently positioned for massive um, social and economic takeoff. But in, the, in recognizing that, we are also seeing that there is an urgent need um, right. for what we're attempting to do. Because we are seeing that the foreign direct investment that are coming, they have foreign direct investment partners right. who are bringing capital and uh, local content do not have um, the capital. So what we are about to do here, I think will certainly complement that process. And um, there's a lot of work moving forward. And I certainly wanna thank you for taking the time out from your present schedule and to, to sit with us and to you know discuss these content. Um, and for any part in work, because I know you're a busy lady. Yeah. No problem. I, uh, you know, one of the reasons why uh, I decided to uh, enter the, the Guyanese market uh, at this time is because I don't want to see, it's good to have foreign investments, but the local investments also need to be thriving. We cannot, uh, not all foreign investment is good for, for us as a people. So we need to be very careful of um, how we do business and how we operate. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to collaborate with persons on the ground, uh, because we need to be able to stand up and show a united front um, so if there's monies coming in, uh, they're not coming in to take over, but they're coming in to assess what is already there, what is already in existence. We've been doing business for a long, long time, but the reasons why we, or one of the main reasons is because of lack of access to capital. So when the money start flowing in, let us have that filtration system to weed out good money and bad money and make sure that the money that comes in go to the right people and not just cut us out of the, the, the front line and set up shop. So I have a bakery and you come in with your international bakery, push me out of the business. Your first, your first line, if you want to come into the country uh, with a bakery business, is to possibly invest in a bakery already existing, uh, owned by a Guyanese person. Uh, so that we're still left in power. So that that's why persons like yourselves, yourself, is really, really key in this big shift that's about to happen. I certainly thank agree. You for having me. <laughs> You're most welcome. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time out. Um, this is only the beginning. There's a lot of work ahead. And um, thanks again. And do enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Have a good one. Most welcome. All right. Bye.